on behalf of 24HourAnswers.com, I welcome you to today's lesson. In this video, we're going to look at example six of L'Hopital's rule, and this is the infinity minus infinity form. Let's look at this limit down here. The limit of f of x as x approaches infinity, and if we plug infinity into x right here, and then we subtract, okay, so let's plug infinity into this thing. Infinity squared minus three times infinity is still going to be infinity. I mean, this right here is going to get bigger a lot faster. Infinity squared versus three times infinity, if you want to think about it like that. So all of that stuff inside of there is infinity. The square root of infinity is still going to be infinity. There is our indeterminate form, infinity minus infinity. If we look over in Desmos, we have f of x equals that same function, and as x gets big, it does appear that this function is, you know, approaching some specific y value. It's our goal to figure out what that y value is. As x gets really big, what y value are we getting close to? So here's the trick here. So like in example five, I did explain where we wanted to try to get it in a fraction form where we have infinity over infinity or zero over zero, and then we can apply L'Hopital's rule. So I'm gonna rewrite f of x as the following. I'm gonna leave that first term alone, subtract, and inside of here, I'm going to factor out of x squared. If we factor a x squared out of this first term, we are left with one. And if we factor a x squared out of this, be careful, that's going to be minus three over x. Double check this by distributive property. x squared times one is x squared, and x squared times negative three over x is negative three x, because one of those x's in that x squared would cancel out with that one, leaving us with three x. Now let's go one more step. We have x minus, let's take the square root of this x squared and we can say x square root of one minus, and I'm gonna write this as three times x to the negative one power. Now it is important to note here, since x is getting really big, x is going to infinity, the square root of x squared will be a positive x because x is already positive. And then I left this piece alone right over here. So hopefully that doesn't confuse you too much. One minus three over X is one minus three times X to the negative one. And then again, when we took the square root of X squared, we get X. Now let's factor that X out of this term and this term here. So factoring that X out, we have one minus the square root of one minus three times X to the negative one power. All I did was pull these X's out. You can verify this by distributing. X times one is X. X times this negative square root of stuff is just going to simply put that X back right there. Now check out this next step. I'm going to leave this in the numerator. So we have one minus the square root of one minus three X to the negative one power. And I'm going to shoot this to the bottom by writing X to the negative one power. Now we have a fraction and hopefully this fraction here is going to lead to either infinity over infinity or zero over zero. Just some things to note here, if we see x to the negative one, do not forget that is simply one over x. And I got this x to the negative one again by shooting this down to a denominator, and all we're doing there is changing the sign of our exponent. As you can see there, positive one, now it's a negative one. So now let's let x get really big again. If we plug a big number into here for this value of x, we get one minus the square root of one minus three times what? Well, x to the negative one, remember that's one over x. One over a really big number is pretty much zero. So one minus three times zero is one. One minus the square root of one is zero up top. So right now we have zero over, and then again at the bottom, let's let x get really big. X to the negative one, same thing as this right here, and one over a really big number is zero. So lo and behold, we have a zero over zero form. This means we can apply L'Hopital's rule. And I tell you what, before we apply L'Hopital's rule, let's just go ahead and rewrite this one more time to make differentiating a little bit easier I want to take this square root and write it as something to the one half power. That's how we can always write square roots. So we have one minus three X to the negative one power. And then I'm going to leave my denominator the same. Now, 
We've already said this is going to be the zero over zero form, so let's take the derivative of this using L'Hopital's rule. The derivative of one is zero, so we have zero minus. The derivative of this stuff here, we have to apply the chain rule. Pull your one half down, leave the inside alone, so one minus three x to the negative one, and don't forget to subtract one from this exponent, leaving us with a negative one half. And then finally, applying the chain rule, we need to multiply by the derivative of this stuff that we left alone. The derivative of this inside piece is going to be zero there. And then we have the derivative of this term here. Negative one times negative three is positive three, x to the negative two. And again, what I did here was I subtracted one from my exponent when I differentiated that piece. This is all over. The derivative of our bottom piece is going to be negative one x to the negative two. Pull your power down, subtract one from your exponent. That's how I got this piece right here. Now to prevent confusion, I'm just going to draw these lines over here because this is what we're focusing on now. So now it is time to clean this thing up, or you could go ahead and try to find the limit as x approaches infinity right now. Now cleaning this up can get a little bit messy, but I'm just gonna throw away that zero there. That's not important because it's zero minus that stuff. And then we're multiplying by really just three x to the negative two. So if I throw that away, and we understand that that's a positive three, what I want you to notice here is that we can cancel out this x to the negative two with this one because this x to the negative two power is getting multiplied by all of this stuff. And just like at the bottom, x to the negative two is getting multiplied by one. Therefore, our denominator is just gonna be a negative one and we have a negative one half up top. So really these two negatives cancel each other out, leaving us with a positive fraction, that's great. And since it's over one, we don't have to really worry about this bottom at all. So this one half, I'm gonna write it as one over two, and I'm still gonna write a big fraction, but it's no longer this fraction here anymore. I'm really just writing this as a fraction, so therefore I can write this at the bottom. That's gonna be one minus three x to the negative one to the positive one half power. I change that negative exponent to a positive exponent, and then we still have this three hanging out as well. So one times three up top is going to give us three. Now that has cleaned up quite a bit. And now let's see if we can apply this limit. Let's let X get really big. The three stays the same. The two stays the same. And the only thing that's gonna happen here is the following. We want to let X get really big. If we let X get really big here, and again, I mentioned this earlier, X to the negative one power is one over X. And if we're letting x get really big, one over a really big number is zero. So three times zero is zero. One minus zero is still one. And the square root of one, because we have one minus zero, that's one to the one half power. We're really taking the square root of that. And the square root of one is one. Therefore, all of that stuff right here, one minus three times x to the negative one, all to the one half power is one. And now we can evaluate this limit and we get three halves. Let's verify this over in Desmos. So we have that same function, f of x here, and earlier we were letting x get really big. We said our limit was three halves, and three halves is three over two, which is 1.5. Three divided by two is 1.5. I'm gonna keep on dragging along here and I'm gonna let X get really big. We're out here around 70. And look at the value of Y. As X is getting bigger, that value of Y is around 1.5. Right now we see 1.516. I'm gonna zoom way out and I'm gonna let X get somewhere around 250. Look at the value of Y now, 1.505. So as X gets really big, just by me doing this here, if I go out here to 1,000, Look at the value of y now, 1.501. This corresponds perfectly with this example that we worked out. But yes, it did involve a lot of trickery at the beginning when we got infinity minus infinity. We had to write it in some type of form where we hopefully got zero over zero or infinity over infinity. And in this problem, we did. We got zero over zero. We did L'Hopital's rule. We did some funky simplifying with all this scribbled stuff in here but ultimately it did lead to the correct limit as we saw over in Desmos of three halves. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.
Be sure to check out our YouTube channel for more videos. Links to our social media are in the description below.